Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today, as we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, we recall Jesus' invitation to be with him in paradise. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Wayman. At the sign of peace, a simple gesture or a bow is always appropriate. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. At this time, please direct your attention to the screens for a video message from our Archbishop. With the short days, colder nights, and the loss of our brilliant fall colors, there's a starkness to November. In recent years, we've walked together through times of starkness, challenges in our archdiocese, changes in our culture, even a pandemic. But on this weekend of the Feast of Christ the King, I come before you to ask that you join me in hope. It's the hope that fills my heart as I reflect on your generous and insightful participation in our synod process, and now issue a pastoral letter to chart a course for our archdiocese. It's the hope that comes from recognizing that Jesus, as the beloved hymn for this day reminds us, is indeed victor, ruler, Lord, and redeemer. You will recall that Jesus said to his disciples in the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That is my prayer for our local church as well. I share our Lord's assessment that the harvest is indeed plentiful, as evidenced by the many beacons of hope that you identified throughout the synod process. Many of you have already shared with me individually your desire to pass on the richness of our Catholic faith to your children and grandchildren, to introduce them to Jesus, or bring them back to the church, and a deep yearning to know our faith better and to learn how to share it with others. I have also seen the Eucharistic devotion of so many who recognize that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life and produces hearts burning with our Lord's love for the poor and marginalized. Our church is ripe for renewal, and now I ask you to join me as laborers for this bountiful harvest. Those efforts begin in the upper room. You will recall that there were three important events that happened in that sacred spot events that continue to guide us in our journey of faith as we seek to renew this local church. It was there that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. The master became the servant. As Jesus himself told the apostles, if he who is our master serves us, so must we go and serve others. Moreover, it was in the upper room that Jesus fed his disciples with his body and blood through the institution of the Eucharist. He continues to feed us at every mass. And finally, the church was born through the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Following Christ's death and resurrection, his closest followers were fearfully hiding in the upper room. Jesus appeared to them, set them afire with the Holy Spirit, and then sent them forth. We can experience a new Pentecost, join our Lord in attending to the needs of our sisters and brothers, and be truly changed by encountering Jesus, especially through the Eucharist. In short, we can go forth and make disciples of all the nations, in our neighborhoods, our homes, and even our own hearts. So that we can together advance that vision, I ask you to please read my pastoral letter entitled, You Will Be My Witnesses, Gathered and Sent from the Upper Room. You can find it at archspm.org slash synod letter. There's a lot to unpack there, so you may wish to read one section at a time, praying and reflecting after each. We'll have more opportunities to reflect upon the letter and the synod priorities I have identified in the coming months. We're also producing materials to facilitate group discussion so that you can more fruitfully discuss the letter with family and friends. In the coming year, moreover, your parish will bring forth ways to practically achieve the three priorities identified in the pastoral letter. I also invite you to read the year one synod plan in which I outline concrete steps to move forward in the next year and a half. I feel blessed, sisters and brothers, to have you as co-workers in the Lord's Vineyard 
in the midst of the rich harvest with which this local church has been blessed. As we come face to face with the magnitude of that harvest, let's remember the Lord's words, be not afraid. The Lord has reminded us in the course of these three years that he has been walking with us and guiding us with his spirit. We need not labor alone. It's by walking together in our labor and remembering our role as collaborators in the Lord's work that we are going to be able to reap the amazing harvest he has brought forth for us. Please join Bishop Williams and me in this important work. Thank you and God bless you. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us just take a moment to call to mind any sins that we may have committed, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Mary God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. In my fault, in my fault, in my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majestic service and ceasingly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. 
he delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the Christ, the King of the Jews, <clears throat> Save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And, indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen. <coughs> Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
with an infection in my tailbone that has been there for a long time, unfortunately. But sometimes when it acts up, it, it causes uh, inflammation uh, to go through my body. And so I do have a cough. I don't have COVID, but uh, I do have a cough. Start with just a simple question today. Do you believe that Jesus is king of the universe? It's the feast day that we celebrate today. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is king of the universe? Yeah, just let it sink in. I just want that as a little bit of a backdrop to breaking open today's scripture. I see also a question, and I don't normally do this, but I just want to raise of hands. How many watched the Vikings game last weekend? <laughs> How many heard about the Vikings game last weekend? Very good. It was a game apparently for the ages, whatever else it might be labeled as. When I was watching it, and about a minute left in the third quarter, I got a call to go to do a wellness check on somebody. And so I got ready, and I went there, went to their condominium, and I got there before the family. The security guard wouldn't let me in because I wasn't family. Family came. They actually wouldn't let them in either because they didn't have a key. And so I called a different family member, and they did have a fob. They came by that time the police had arrived. So this one family member and I and the police went up. His fob didn't work because it was already six months old, and they just changed the fob six months ago. But then they did, the security person did let him in because at least he had a fob. <clears throat> Went directly to her bedroom. I found this 87-year-old woman laboring to breathe, breathing hard, unresponsive to touch, unresponsive to commands. Fortunately, she died four hours later at HCMC. But I think about that in light of the Vikings game. I think about how I thought that that was the most important thing going on at that point in my life. And I think it puts perspective sometimes on things. So I was talking to my brother-in-law who works at 3M. And now he goes into the office, but they work on two floors. And you just go there and you grab whatever cubicle, whatever office you find open. <coughs> but a couple weeks ago, he went back to his actual office and looked at it. He hadn't been there since March 17th, 2020. He found a stack of papers. And he thought about how important those papers were back then. Took a big garbage can and threw them all in there. I think what we look at is sometimes our priorities. We get distracted. I think that can be true. That we think and say with our mouth that Jesus Christ is king of the universe. But how do our words, our actions, how do your words, how do your actions, how do my words, my actions, Live that reality. How often we can <clears throat> be pulled away or think that something else is more important, think that something else is going to replace it. We don't say that with our words. We don't think that. But sometimes our heart isn't in line with the soul king of our soul. Think about the Archbishop's letter that came out today, a great pastoral letter. I read it last night. It came out yesterday. I read it last night, and I've been 
I'm just really impressed with what he's trying to do. But even just the title of it, Will You Be Witnesses? Will You Be My Witness? How important that is just in our lives to be a witness of Christ, to be a witness of God. Now, most of it was very positive. Most of it just laid out a little bit of what was going to happen in the next couple of years. We also talked about the listening sessions he had a couple of years ago to begin the synod process. And he talked about how he heard <clears throat> that there was a lamenting of the decline of the church and our inability to be effective witnesses of Jesus Christ today. He even said that Pope Benedict, or Pope Francis, sorry, in 2017, preached a homily on that l lamentation. There are many Christians who profess that Jesus is God. There are many priests who profess that Jesus is God and many bishops. But does everyone bear witness to Jesus? Or is being Christian just like being a fan of a team or having a philosophy? Being Christian, first of all, is bearing witness to Jesus. That is what the apostles did. The apostles bore witness to Jesus and because of this, Christianity spread throughout the whole world. What if the apostles didn't spread the news? How often do we get afraid to offend somebody? How often do we get afraid because we might not know what the other person might think? So our witness, we keep quiet. Our action we keep silent because we're afraid, failing to be witness. Patricia Pebda goes on to actually talk about a Pew report about a question is basically, how does your parish, how does your congregation evangelize? And when asked whether <clears throat> the spreading of the faith, <clears throat> excuse me, was a high priority. 75% of conservative Protestant congregations and 57 of the Ameri African Americans congregation responded yes. Whereas only 6% of Catholic parishes did so. When asked whether they respond to evangelization activities in their parish, that number even fell to 3%. Archbishop Hebda is inviting us, encouraging us to look at our baptismal call, to look at that upper room, how important that was, to be evangelistic, to spread the news, if Christ is king, if that is true, how do we live that reality? How do we bear witness in our words and in our actions to our family, to our friends? Most of us have family members who have fallen away from the faith. Do we just avoid the conversation? Or are we willing to bear witness? to the reality that Jesus Christ is King. We don't always live that reality perfectly. I don't always live it perfectly. But sin has no reign, no spot in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We must eradicate it. We must, with his love, his mercy, with his grace, participate with that knowing that we will fail, but it is that aspect. Today is the last liturgical Sunday of our liturgical year. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, beginning our new liturgical year. But I'd like
like how this year ends. This year ends with the two thieves. One that jeers at him. One that just expects him to forgive him. And the other recognizes him as Christ, as his Savior. How important that is. Just remember me when you come into your kingdom. One moment hanging on the cross next to Jesus. And the next moment, amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That is our desire. If we allow, not just by our words, Christ to be king of the universe. Christ to be king of our families. Christ to be king of ourselves. Not just by words, but truly living that reality. So I ask you again, do you believe that Christ is king of the universe? And more importantly, does your words, does your actions, do my words, do my actions follow my response? Let us turn to our Heavenly Father with our <coughs> profession of faith. I believe. Confident that the Father hears and answers our humble prayers, let us turn to him with our petitions. Let Christ's reign be visible through the loving service of all members of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That world leaders make visible Christ's reign by working for justice and bring peace to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our newly baptized, especially Eliana May Holtz, who was baptized this afternoon. May she grow in faith and learn to lead others by serving them as Christ the King has taught us. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the disciples gathered here today, may Christ's reign be visible through each of us in our daily efforts to serve those around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in need of God's healing, especially those mentioned in our prayer ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marilyn Sundberg, and those listed in our Book of Remembrance, may they forever dwell in the kingdom of Christ the King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gathering all of these prayers and the prayers deep in our heart, and we especially pray for the one among us, and we pray for the implementation of the pastoral letter that Archbishop has written to us. Hail Mary, full of grace, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all the nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest and king of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice he, to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and by making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Archbishop Hebdar, Bishop, Bishop Williams, his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share that sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
just allow this Eucharist to touch your deepest wound this day. Allow Jesus to examine that wound. If you're able, allow Jesus to touch that wound. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that the glory of obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, may we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There's a couple of different announcements today. Again, we have our giving tree up in the narthex there to help those in great need uh, during this Christmas season. I thank all of those who have taken a tag home and already returned it. It is great to be in the heart of the city and be able to serve so many because of your generosity. I thank you for supporting that ministry in particular. Uh, uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving. We'll have one Mass here at 9 a.m. Uh, our offices will obviously be closed that day and the following day, but we'll have our normal Mass schedule on Friday at 7 and noon. And so feel free to do that. There's more information about that in the bulletin, so feel free to read about all of that. And again, I thank all of those who have returned your pledge cards for our uh, stewardship. I thank you for your prayerfulness. I thank you for your service. I thank you for your generosity. What a beautiful gift. If you have not yet returned it, just ask the Lord, what do you ask you to, to give this year? what it looks like in your heart, what it looks like in his heart, and see where it is. And so I ask you to return your pledge cards as soon as possible. It does help us budget for the year. It does help us understand where we might have revenue or where we might have to cut back. And so I thank you so much for all that you do for St. Olaf. I thank you for being here. What a beautiful gift. At the end of your pews is a uh, one-sheet page. Um, it has a UR code, a QR code on it. Uh, that brings you right to the link of the uh, pastoral letter um, so that you can get that. What a beautiful gift it is that Archbishop has written us a letter. Um, and so feel free to share that with people. Feel free, I ask you, as Archbishop Hebda asks us to do, is to really prayerfully read it. Read it nice and slow. Just what's God asking you out of this? What's God asking me out of this? And so it's a beautiful, beautiful gift. And so I thank you for that. I thank our choir today, what a beautiful gift it is to have from age to age here, what a beautiful gift it is to be able to share our, our ministry, to share our gifts in so many different ways, and I thank you for all that you do. I thank our lectors, I thank our ushers, I thank all of those that clean this building, all of the people that work here, I thank them so very, very much. What a great gift. We do have uh, donuts and coffee after Mass today, so I thank uh, and invite you to come there after Mass today. Well, what a beautiful gift. I thank you again for making St. Olaf a part of your Sunday. Without you, we would not be able to do the ministry we do. And again, we just all need to try to evangelize. I tried to evangelize the 11th grader who came up and brought the gifts up for Mass because he's a cowboy fan from Iowa. So I tried to convince him on both, but it didn't work yet. Um, we can all try, and we can all pray for one another. And, and no matter what team we root for, that we all get to heaven. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.